Just a quick introduction before we get into answering the questions. So last week I was in Delhi again and I got to meet up with the Seuss family, aka from the Surfing Violinist channel, and they took me around Delhi the whole day. Now I've been watching their channel for years, so it was interesting to actually finally meet them. And if you haven't come across their channel yet, I'll link it in the description box. But basically they're an American family living in India, and it's Ford that shares their experiences along with a lot of other creative content. And you're an avid watcher of his daily vlogs, and you may have already seen his cut on these topics. But these were the topics in particular that I wanted to address, just because I do get asked these questions so often. And if you haven't yet seen it, then just keep watching as well. Answer the questions now. Why? You know, that's the first question anyone asks us on our channel, at least, and I'm sure you get this question a lot: is why would you ever pick India? Um, and I don't know what the people have against India who are asking that question. A lot of times it's Indians asking it, and I'm just like, well, you know. I mean, I don't know. The place I grew up, I sometimes ask that question. Why in the world would you want to come to this place? Because the surf's not good, you know? I mean, why would you want to come to a beach when there's no surf? So I don't get it. But there are other reasons people have to come to a certain place. And so for me, uh, it has been, there is, and it's the cliches, it's the, thing, the things you hear so many times the thousands and thousands of years of cultural history, the many numbers of cultures that are represented in languages. And it's just so different from our upbringing and our own culture that I learn new things. It's just, it's so, such a different mindset that it makes me think about life a lot more. And uh, we've definitely learned a lot in our four years here and I expect we will learn much more. Uh, you can see the type of videos we, we've made in our first four years here, I imagine uh, that will be changing in the future. We've got all kinds of other untapped cultures and uh, types of places to visit that, uh, that, yeah, we have a lot to learn from. And, I, and people are commenting all the time with, check this place out or check this uh, holy site out. And I'm just like, I've never even heard of it. So, yeah, there's plenty more to learn. So I feel like we haven't really scratched the surface. That's the, the kind of the why for me. Um, so the why, why? I want to move to India and um, as I said I've been studying in India a couple of years back and the why was just because I like the atmosphere, I like the environment and um, even now I'm here for the first time on holiday, any other time I've been here I've never actually been on holiday here so now I'm just even just roaming around like they've just taken me some places as well and I just like the environment even whether I'm just looking at shops or whatever it may be um, I just like being here and I like the people as well and just in general the family values and just that in general there's nothing in particular it's just the environment is what I can say and what I can explain best. I think that being a foreigner in Delhi is fun you. Uh, I I kind of feel bad almost saying this, but you kind of get the best of both worlds. Like if you want to have a village experience, you can meet people and have it. If you want to have like the high-end Delhi experience, you can live that experience as well. Um, so as a foreigner, like you, you do feel like you stick out like a sore thumb in India and in Delhi. So you, you get that, but then at the same time, sometimes because you stick out like a sore thumb, that actually works to your advantage still here in this country where like you can get um, you can queue hop like get to the front or people may not question you or they'll like give someone a hard time I don't know right like so we still get that kind of like oh, okay you get uh, treated a little bit nicer sometimes but then sometimes it's a mixed bag right yeah it is it's a mixed bag I feel like more of the time, the guest is God, is what I come across. I mean, except in certain places like Connaught Place, where you've got the towels oh. who are always coming in. Like, yeah, unless the Can I interest you in some weed? Can I interest <laughs> you in some weed? Or some, it's either weed, or it's shoe shines, or it's $10,000 rugs. You know, it's one of those three things. Yeah. What it's like being an expat in India, i.e. when I was living in India, um, I would say at least it depends why you're here or your lifestyle, your budget and everything. There's a lot of factors to take into consideration. Um, but it's, I would say it's like normal everyday life of like a local, I think there is a large again, Indian audience watching as well, so you can understand. It's just like a normal life that you lead. 
um, like I lived in a hostel, except it's a bit of an exaggerated version of it because you do get certain privileges, as Melissa said. Um, so it can be good and it can be bad, like sometimes you'll get positive discrimination, whereas on the other hand you might get negative discrimination, like you know, for example, overcharge or you know, you thought of it as a certain way, so you have to face that kind of stuff and deal with it appropriately. For like being an expat in India is just like normal everyday life, as your life is, as a normal girl, Indian girl's life is just a bit more exaggerated because of those privileges. Since I'm not a lady, I, I can't come in with too much. I mean, I can observe as an outsider, but being a male in Delhi, I never really feel in danger, so it would be better to get the ladies' response on that and comparing you know, different places and stuff like that. You judge the situation accordingly, um, on maybe you would change your behavior a bit, like I would say, as opposed to living in your hometown. Uh, but for the most part, I think people have got a wrong perception of it because, again, you it's safe, I would say. People often like contact me and say, you know, I've planned my trip for India, should I you know, reconsider, should I cancel my trip because I've heard of this, that, like all these horror stories. But at the end of the day, like, as I said, you just go about your normal everyday life um, and judge the situation accordingly, whether it's what you wear or what you say or who you speak with. You know, it's a matter of common sense. At the end of the day, as well, there's only so many precautions you can take and that you should need to take anyway, it's not your responsibility. Maybe a bit more, and Sophie, I can agree, um, but it's nothing as what it is perceived, and I think people need to start understanding that, that you just get on with your normal day-to-day day -day life, and it's not a matter of like, living in fear or anything. I think it is a lot like to do with the statistics as well, like there's what, 1.2 billion people in this country, if you think of it like this, if 1% of the country is bad, that's what, 100,000 people? But I mean, the likelihood of you ever coming across them is slim in like, say, a two-week holiday. I think it has actually been more of a rallying cry, you know, some of these things to, to draw attention to some of these issues so that uh, women's rights groups can rightfully say, okay, we need to have a conversation about this, is they're using these to kind of spearhead this movement to talk, talk about it in a good way. But unfortunately, that's gone all over the globe yeah, thanks to Twitter and thanks to the internet. And, you know, so now everyone's like, oh, standing in judgment. Like, you know, you got Especially in the way like documentaries perceive and you only shed like the bad light on it. Oh, what about you? Anything to add to the the lady? Yeah, no. I think it's right. Like you, you go about your normal everyday life. Like I don't um, you just make wise choices. The the nice thing is these days you've got smartphones, so like if I'm going around Delhi and taking an auto or taking a taxi, like usually there's some sort of accountability behind that. Like even with the auto, um, you can always like, like I was told this one father told his daughters, take a picture of the auto's number on the side when they get in and then send it to someone. So like there's always ways to track you or like now you've got Uber and Ola, which have had horror stories here in Delhi being told about them, but um, well, a lot of good stories too that no, yeah. nobody talks about it when it works okay and you know it's like when you take it any sort of small sample set out of a you know this one isolated event just people cherry pick these statistics you know it's like yeah nobody's talking about the good uber drivers and there's always i feel like when you're always talking about the subject there's there's the exceptions yeah and there's the things that break the norm it's always uh never a strict black and white so I'd say that I, as a foreigner lady living in Delhi, I do feel pretty safe. And right, like they tell you, just be smart, listen to that little voice inside your head, and sometimes when it's starting to put red flags up, like, be yeah. smart and follow that. And have a friend that ha has that, like, she's really good with that intuition thing. I feel like she's always been really good with that. So you want to find someone like her, not someone on the other extreme, though, who's like, feelers up all the time, like, oh, what, what was that, or who was that guy? Like, you're just a normal dude, like, I don't know what. I have a friend like that. Just freaked out about everything. I mean, I, yeah, I have friends like that in the States, so, you know, like, that was nothing wrong in this neighborhood. This is, like, totally fine. That one dude looked really sketchy. I know the guy. It's okay. I don't know.